So I'm going to talk about data science. And I've tried to fit it into the theme here of craft, so you, you, can, you can let me know whether I did okay or not. Skip the intro to Cloudera. I think if you, if, if you know what Hadoop is, you know what Cloudera is. If you don't know what Hadoop is, it's hard to explain Cloudera. But, but we, do, we do big data, open source big data. And I'm, my piece of the puzzle is data science. So I want to talk about what that means and maybe argue that data science isn't even one thing. There's actually at least two tribes or camps in the data science community, and I'll tell you about my tribe and you know, how we communicate with the other. So, so what is it we, uh, that we talk about when we talk about data science? I think uh, you have some ideas, and I, I bet they're not all the same one, and it's fine. I think they're, they're all right. They're just actually, it talks about a, it means different things to different people. So let me start off with some comedy. I, uh, I lifted a couple quotes from the internet here. A, a data scientist, yeah, okay, just read it. <laughs> Don't do mean to read it. Uh, a data scientist is a statistician in San Francisco. A data scientist statistics on a Mac. And the third one is from my, from my colleague in the US, Josh Wills, which I, I want to come back to since I think he's, he's got it a little bit writer. A data scientist is someone who's better at statistics than any software engineer and better at software engineering than any statistician. Yeah, so it's somewhere in the middle. That's actually a pretty good definition. Okay, so this is what people seem to think. Um, if, if I paraphrase what our customers seem to think or what they, uh, what they want when they ask, say, can you gen us up some data science. It's stuff like this. It's, uh, you know, we think data science is about finding insights and data, and it's what you guys specialists do to understand data, and it's applied statistics, and it's predicting the future, and um, it's maybe it's, it has something to do with analyzing politics and sports. And I understand this point of view since it's kind of what we, we see out there in the, in the popular press. And we've got you know, folks like Nate Silver, like the, the, the face of data science. And he's some kind of a uh, you know, genius that goes and plays with the data and, you know, uh, on his computer and comes up with uh, answers about reality. And that is data science, no, no doubt about it, that is. But somehow this, this doesn't seem to match up a lot with what we do for customers. Um, it, we, we don't sit there with some data and, and think and you know, be geniuses in the lab and then come give them a report. That's simply not my world of data science. And it started to puzzle me, and I, I've tried to put my finger on what it is. And I think there's at least two, uh, two worlds of data science, and it's, it's not obvious maybe to the outside world that, that it's more than this. I think the, the popular picture of data science is, is sort of focused on the data scientist. Data science is a thing that some kind of uh, genius does, and it's something that a person does. It's some, something you do with, with tools and machines, and you, you come up with an idea and a report and a graph. And that is true, that is true, that is data science, but it's not all that data science is. Uh, data science is, is about crafting what we call exploratory or investigative analytics. It is about using R. Uh, environments like R. It's about using Tableau or, or, or your favorite BI tool of choice to, to draw pictures and, and understand data. It is, but that's not all it is. So this is part of the craft. This is what one of the, 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 the tribes of data science crafts, but, it, but it's not all. So the, the, the thing I, I think I, I, that made it clear to me was when I looked at um, who was taking our, our training course, our, our data science training course. And it was maybe 20% statisticians, people that seemed to have a, a math background, a research background, a, th a theory background, but it was definitely like 80% engineers, people that don't have the applied math background but do know how to build systems at scale and wanted to pick up the, you know, some of the math um, what, versus you know, someone with all the math trying to pick up a little bit of the engineering. And this kind of also resonated with, with my picture of the, the, the mix of skills that go into what we do as data science. It's kind of 80% an engineering problem. And, this, uh, and it's, it's maybe 20% math and machine learning. And this, is, this slide gets increasingly divisive every time I, I, I present it. So uh, I'm, I'm getting get increasingly shrill about this. Some people say, this, no, that's not data science, that's data engineering. I think of this as data science. I think of data science as mostly an engineering problem. <laughs> Because in, in, in practice, when people do uh, real-world data science, there's a lot of engineering that goes into it. So my, my claim is that the data science is mostly an engineering problem. And that's not, maybe that's a bit at odds with what we think uh, the core skills are, you know, using R, doing math, doing statistics. To, to bolster my case, here's a, uh, just one slide on a, on a recent customer project we did. For, for Cerner, uh, um, uh, they wanted to do some machine learning over, over the patient data. And they have a great blog post. It's, it's linked there at the bottom. It's a lovely uh, write-up on what they did. And if you, uh, it, I've, I've summarized the bullet points here, which, which almost aren't important, but 
if you it's like circle the bit that's machine learning, it's 20% mm, of, of, of the work and the ideas and the blog post. And all the rest is really engineering, right? Getting the data in, um, make, cleaning the data, joining the data, teeing it up to a system, build, you know, building the model, learning from the model, and then exporting those results to another system that can consume it in the real time with monitoring repeatedly, continuously, et cetera. So the, the core is, is important, it's machine learning, but somehow data science, as we practice it and our customers practice it, is a lot of engineering too. So I declared 2014 the, the year of the, the lab to the factory. This is the analogy I've, I've stolen from my colleague that, that I, th I think summarizes um, the, the trend the data science is undergoing now in, in the field. And also, let me say 2014 is the, the year of the factory. We're, we're not going to do away with the lab and the data scientists and the exploratory analytics, but we've got to add to it the factory, operational analytics, predictive analytics. So we need to not just be able to come up with a model and understand data, but we need to operationalize that model. Uh, I might be able to, to craft uh, a model of customer fraud, but I need to deploy that model so that I can tell you right now, the uh, session on the site is, looks fraudulent and we should do something about it. So we need to repeatedly get this, um, it's almost maybe the opposite of the monkey graph thing. We need to take this cottage industry of, of building models by hand and somehow uh, productionize it to make it repeatable and make it something we can, we can, we can do over and over and over for a, a, a thousand business problems. Um, so I think we, we are seeing the data science craft turn operational. Maybe operationalizing is, is its own craft. It's just a, from a you know, different side, a different tribe within data science. Uh, it's kind of our tribe. So we're, we're going we're gonna to still have data scientists and exploratory analytics, but now we're going to talk about how to put what they do, bottle up what they do, and operationalize it so that I can deploy, like I deploy NoSQL stores or databases, a machine learning system that I can throw data into and get data out of. We're still going to need data scientists to help us design features and understand what problem we're solving and what input needs to come in and what needs to go out. But it really shouldn't be that much harder from there just to deploy that stuff. You know, we, we don't need to build a database every time we come up with a, 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 a problem requiring relational data. Same for data science. And we really don't have the right side of this picture, not nearly as much as we have the, the left side of the picture. I mean, I think if you look out at the world of tools and, and such, uh, you know, the world of exploratory analytics is machine learning libraries, environments, statisticians, um, the worry is things like model accuracy. And we actually have rich tools and libraries for all this stuff. This is a pretty solved problem. Uh, languages like R, Python is especially good for, for machine learning as it turns out. Great um, libraries, scikit-learn, Weka for uh, Java, MLlib on Spark, Mahout for Hadoop to some extent. Um, these are all great, but we, the operational community is, has a different set of nouns. Servers, clusters, engineering, queries per second, data pipelines, languages more like maybe systems languages like Java. We don't really have the equivalent tools on the other side. There's not an obvious uh, bucket, uh, a server I run and, and, and operationalize a model. Um, for those of you that are familiar, familiar with Hadoop, I, I kind of express it this way. Uh, I can take an old, an old tool like Mahout or something to build a model on Hadoop, but then what? Um, if you look around on Hadoop, it's, it's not obviously a, uh, an answer to the rest of this concern. How do I get the input in there in the first place? How do I query the model? How do I repeat this process and manage that, that, that iteration? There's just not really good, um, good answers here. So this is kind of where the, um, the operational analytics tribe needs to, needs to get busy and, and start crafting stuff and, and sharing that craft with, the, with the, the other tribe, right? The data scientists. So uh, you know, we share experience by, by sharing open source code. That's the only thing we know how to do. Um, and it's not the thing that the, um, the exploratory analytics, the statisticians know how to do. Statisticians know how to write research papers. They know how to make environments and tools to some extent, uh, libraries. They know how to uh, you know, write reports and draw graphs. And that's very important. But someone's got to be writing some tools and code too. And that's going to come from the, the larger group of engineers coming in to, coming in to, to be data scientists. So there's work to do, and, that, and that's about half of what we do even at Cloudera as data scientists, is building open source tools. So, so this, is what, you know, this is what we do that the, the, the statisticians don't. We you know, write down goals, the things we need to do in data science operationally. You know, we, need, we need to do real-time queries, we need to do real-time updates, we need REST APIs, we need it to be parallelized and continuous and built on this tool. All things you'd never hear a statistician say. 
But this is exactly the kind of thing I think engineers and ops people are looking for when, when they come up to data science. Where's my server? What's it built on? How does it run? What's the API? What's the output format? So we need these tools. Um, and, that, that's, that, that's a, and that's, uh, we kind of put our money where our mouth is and we try to build open source software around it. Um, so like any good company, we make an open source project, pick an animal, um, <laughs> make a GitHub project, and we've done that too, and, uh, and, and draw a logo too. So uh, for any of you that actually happen to be interested in Hadoop and machine learning, you might want to take a look at this if you're compelled by this idea that these are problems we need to solve. We've got some beginnings of solutions as a, a GitHub project. James, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to startle you and say I'm, I'm done already. I know we're, we're, uh, I'm between you and coffee, so I wanted to make this quick and punchy. Now we can do questions now. We can do coffee or we can do, we can do both. So let me take a couple of questions first. Why is it, uh, this, is, this is some of the, 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 the biggest uh, complaints I get. They, people will say, you know, yes, yes, there are these two things, but the left side's the science and the right side's data engineering. And sure enough, science, uh, yeah, the left side, uh, the exploratory stuff is science. We you have, you know, mathematical models and proofs about why this is a valid way to, you know, infer this data or that data. Um, what do you call the rest of data engineering? I don't know. I, I think that what people really want, uh, call, think of as data science, encompasses the data engineering part too. Um, but, but certainly the existing half of the community is full of people, I think, that would look more, much more like scientists, right? In the lab, PhDs, statisticians, not hackers, right, like us. Question here? So, uh, two, two comments about that. Uh, so uh, I've been building uh, real-time analytics, like predictive analytics software, for about three years. And one thing that I've learned is that you can teach uh, a PhD in math how to code reasonably well that will draw them across the finish line, especially when you pair them with a programmer, but you can't teach a software engineer eight years of, of high-level math. Um, what you do is you give them a lot of confidence in being able to execute and not actually understand the results. So, so you end up getting all these statistical outcomes that aren't actually applicable to the question at hand, mm -hmm. and they're not educated enough to know that. Um, and the other thing is that the big difference that I see between these two things that is an enormous open academic gap between building models and doing exploratory analysis and operationalizing it is the offline online problem. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you can't convert offline algorithms, which is pretty much pretty much what Hadoop does, you can't just universally convert those to online algorithms, mm -hmm. which is a really, really hard problem. Um, and it That's requires right. mathematicians outside of the engineering process to think about that. So I'm going to review my biases. I, I, I take almost a, not the, not, I don't disagree, but I take a, a flip side perspective on that. You can teach an engineer a little, a, enough math to do something useful. Mm, well, let's not say fairly quickly, but there's, there's tools for that. It's hard to teach a PhD, you know, eight years of all the sort of sys, sysops, devops stuff that, you know, we in the room know too. So you could argue it's, it's hard either way. I think uh, if, if you've got no machine learning model, getting anything reasonably good is, is a win, and that's where a lot of people are now. So I guess I'm more concerned with operationalizing even basic stuff. Even, I mean, honestly, even if people deployed a little bit wrong, then you know, going straight to the optimal solution. You're absolutely right about online, offline. Um, Hadoop's sort of at this inflection point where now finally it's getting really online components on top. Um, you know, uh, Impala, Storm, Spark. So that's, that's got to change, because uh, I mean, right now you have to build basically a, a really a two-tier ar architecture, Lambda architecture, to, to get anything real-time on Hadoop, and that's getting better over time. Um, sorry, I'm going to go here, Rafe. Um, yeah, do you, guys find that, uh, do you guys find that there are a fair number of people that are trying to get into machine learning and the more advanced techniques who figure it out where they can't even count things properly? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, they're, they're failing even, like, basic aggregation. Uh, yeah, okay, so, so are, you, are, you, are people trying to maybe jump way too far ahead and not getting the basics? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times people will come, come and say, we've got a machine learning problem, we want to know which of our stores have or had the biggest increase in sales last quarter. Well, that's just a SQL query, really. Um, and, and great, we can do that, that's easy. Um, yeah, a lot of people are really interested in machine learning. There is a gap, I think. Uh, it, it, you know, there's a, there's a skills gap there because it is fairly different uh, from engineering. So when the, you know, NoSQL came out, database, RDBMS guys could kind of figure out how, how that worked and how to administer it, because it's not really that different. 
uh, you know, machine learning, that, that's a different area of, of school, right, that maybe we, we all overlooked. I mean, I, I, you know, I've, I've almost forgotten all my linear algebra. So, yeah, there's a lot of people trying to run before they can walk, and a lot of times we just need to walk to solve basic problems.